Hi. Uh, it's really great to be here today and, and see uh, all of your smiling faces. Uh, yeah, it's not just uh, the buses and the tube and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we run the roads too. Some people don't know that. The river, uh, the dialer ride. So there's a full range of services out there that a lot of people don't really know that we do. And we're about much more than just tubes and buses. Um, but we do power six and a half million journeys on buses every day, and we do power four million journeys on the tube. So it's, uh, it's uh, quite a big operation that we're running there. I want to talk a bit today um, about what we're doing online. My name's Phil Young. I'm head of online at TFL. I want to talk a bit about what we're doing with maps, what we're doing with data. We've heard it's the new oil, and uh, there's a vast amount that we're doing with data that I really want to tell you about. Uh, and uh, if you're into London, you can do stuff with our data and tell you about what we're doing on the web. Uh, some of you who've, who've, perhaps you're regulars in London, you might be regular users of our website. We have about 8 million people who are. Uh, this last week, if, if I look a bit tired, that's because we've just launched our new website. And uh, that was last Tuesday. And uh, it, it's been a, a bit of a roller coaster ride off over the last 18 months, but now it's out there and you can use it and you can see it and use it on all devices in a really nice way. So, what about TFL? What are we about these days? Uh, there's a lot of perhaps some preconceptions out there about what TFL is. Uh, back from the, the old days in the 80s and the 90s when the tube was uh, a little bit more rusty and cranky than it is today. But we're a much more modern organisation these days and things are really changing in London. And we're able to describe our journey in a, in a new way as to what we're trying to do for customers. So really our goal is not just to move people around anymore, it's about enabling you to make the most of living and working in London. And it's about putting customers at the heart of everything that we do. So you're seeing a shift very much in the tools and the services that we're providing, the data that we're giving out, uh, the, the uh, transport operations themselves that show how we're changing and how we're changing with London uh, to make things better for customers. So what do our customers actually want? What, what is it that they're trying to get out of us? And we've been spent a lot of time uh, getting into some depth as to what customers really see as the important things. The things that will drive our reputation, the things that will drive what they say about us when, uh, perhaps when I'm not in the room and you're having a conversation about TFL and uh, you know, whoever said the prices were higher than in wherever it was, Hawaii. Uh, those things that people say, that's what we really want to change, that perception, so that people feel great about using our services. So they think that they know what we stand for, so that there's a strong offer there that people can buy into, so that they uh, get a great customer experience wherever they deal with us, whether they deal with our staff, our digital products, a vehicle, whatever it is that that experience is good, that they feel like they're getting value for money, that we're demonstrating progress and innovation, that things are improving. And I think you'll agree, if you go out on our network, if you're on one of our new buses, or you're on a new tube, or you're on one of the lines that's been upgraded, you'll be getting that better experience of progress and innovation. And if we can get all that stuff right, then that'll add up to trust. And that's really the quality that we're craving from our customers. We want them to trust us. We want them to continue to support investment so that we can make London better still. Uh, and make it the great place that it is and it deserves to continue to be. So putting that in a digital context, what is it that customers really want from us online and in data and digitally? Well, some of these things are not a news flash. Many people, uh, you, you're here, you're, you're embedded in the digital world, so you understand these things. But any place, any device access to all the tools and services that a customer needs. A personalized service many of the things we talked about today, simpler tasks, that TFL, with all those things that we run and that we operate, we're not seen as 20 different businesses, we're seen as one single integrated operator that enables you to do seamless journeys and get where you need to get and do what you need to do. Because those journeys, they're not just about you getting from A to B, they're about you getting home to see your kids, they're about you getting to that job interview, they're about getting to that meeting uh, for us, it, that's, that's what we call every journey mattering. And, and every journey matters to us, uh, and it matters to you. So it's important for us to get that right. So this is what customers are telling us they want from us. And we're looking at that in these, in these areas. And the two that I'm going to talk about today are the web uh, and also open data. 
Obviously, we're in the staff world as well. We're in the social world. We have around a million uh, people interacting with us on social media. Uh, we're also interested in saving money and in doing marketing. But as I say, the two will focus on our web and open data. The history of TFL is that we were many different companies. And we did have many different types of services exposed completely separately. So we actually had 70 websites at TFL. Um, and what that meant was that if you wanted to plan a journey and buy a ticket and see the next departure for that service, that would be three different websites. If you wanted to interact with us on an account basis, there are many different accounts for you to use. And this is the journey that we're on at the moment, which is through the use of APIs, through the use of uh, connectors, we're able to integrate those services and create a single experience for you. And the website that you see this week is just the starting point of that. That's our first baby step to create that kind of integration out of all the data we have and give you a much better and more integrated experience. So let's talk about that data. Uh, and, and really, uh, what are TFL in terms of data? Well, our background, as I said, from our operations, from the buses, from the tube, from the river, and so on, we generate a vast amount of data. We know the position of every bus in real time. We know the position of every train. We know when it's going to arrive somewhere. We know where the river boats are. We know what Oyster cards have been tapped in and where. We've got a vast pool of data. But the challenge for us is that that data uh, has developed over time. It's not necessarily described in the same way. A river pier is not described in the same way as a cycle hire docking station or in the same way, oh, in the same way as a bus stop or in the same way as a tube stop. So all of those things, they don't really add up. If you try and develop services across that, you need data that is contiguous. It enables you to, to develop across those services. So what we're doing now and what we've done with this uh, new website is we've delivered a single API that normalizes all of that data. And that's enabled us to draw it all together to create a really nice clean layer and then for us to develop really sweetly on top of that. And then what we're going to do with that is we're going to give that away to developers uh, and to third parties so they can do great stuff with it as well. If you're following um, the kind of progress in London with apps and digital services for transport, you'll see there are many, many of them out there that are enabled by our data. Even our friends at Google, they've uh, got their public transport layers. That's enabled through our data and many, many others. So in this model, we take the individual APIs out of the operational systems. We normalize that into a beautifully clean layer where everything's described the same. And then there's an access layer for third-party developers. They can suck that stuff out. And we use that with our single sign-on and our responsive web layer to create something really nice as well if customers want to come to us directly for those services. So why do we do that open data thing? What is that all about? Why not just develop all the services ourselves, keep you in our world? Uh, why not? Well, it's public data ultimately, and we're a public service. So you've, you've contributed, you're paying for that data, and we see that that, da that data belongs to you as the public, um, and it's, you know, it's there for you. We do it for reach. It enables us to get to more people than we'd get to otherwise. We really want anyone who wants travel information, anyone who wants the next bus from the bus stop outside, to be able to get that as quickly and as easily as possible. So we want that everywhere. We don't just want that on the little platform that we run. We want that on everyone's platform. We also want the best possible use of the transport network. So we're getting maximum usage out of what is a, a restricted asset in terms of its capacity. Tube stations aren't going to get any bigger. The buses are not going to get larger. Yeah, we're building crossrail. We're doing new signaling. We're increasing frequency of trains. But ultimately, in some locations, it's constricted. So we want to get better use out of that so people are making better journey choices. We're also doing it for economic benefit. So we're seeing from the developers who are interacting with this data, a lot of small and medium enterprises, a lot of larger companies, we're seeing them generate real value. We're seeing them employing people. We're seeing them generate income. We're seeing them paying tax. Uh, we're seeing those things enabling uh, economic benefit for London and increasing what London is as a hub of technology and uh, economic activity. 
And lastly, what we really want as well is innovation. I've got a really smart team of people. They're, they're great guys and girls. They do great stuff. But they can't innovate everything. And if we've got many more people working on this stuff, we can get more innovative offerings out of it. So what's the outcomes been of that? Well, we've got over 5,000 app developers working on our data. Uh, it's a big old community. Uh, it's built up over the last four or five years. There's at least 200 apps out there. You can get them on your smartphone, uh, or you can use them on, on the desktop browser um, that are at pretty low cost to you as a customer. And there's millions of uh, consumers who are interacting with this data every day. So there's a recent Deloitte study that looked at this, and they said they estimate the economic benefit of this activity to be about 58 million pounds a year, or up to 58 million pounds a year, customer time saved. So from about a spend of around a million pounds a year, we can generate that kind of return on open data. That's nothing to do with the economic benefit of the businesses themselves. That's just in customer time saved. So we can see there is considerable benefit in this for London and for people using the services. So for us, there's a, there's a benefit in cost avoidance. There's a benefit for the consumer. And as far as next steps are concerned, we're about to get this single API out to you in the next uh, one or two months. There'll be an app garden that showcases this stuff. And you'll be in, begin to be able to understand better what we're doing in this space. So that's the data story. What are we doing with that data? Well, as I mentioned, uh, we, we've just launched a new website. Uh, it's uh, the first big change uh, for the last seven years in our digital property. So, uh, it's something we sweated on quite hard to get it right and create something which Londoners will love and will last uh, for the time that it needs to last and, and deal with the kind of expectations that customers have of our services these days. As you can see, over the last few years, things have been uh, ramping up in terms of how many people come and use our services. These are our monthly visits uh, to our online services. And we're just seeing that line just... just just rising and rising. <coughs> we get a peak every so often with a, um, a weather event or an industrial action. Um, but the general trend you can see is, is pretty clear. So we're dealing with a, a lot of uh, customers. We have around 75% of Londoners who are using our site and services. Um, and we're getting around 20 million visits a month. So it's a busy service. The thing that's unique about that service is it's a place where all the modes of transport of London come together, from the roads through to the rivers and the cycle heart and so on. So there is something unique about it. And one of the challenges is that you might say, well, why, why do you need a website, TFL? Why, what, what's that for? Can't the apps do that? Can't Google do that? Can't someone else do that? But there are very few places where all this stuff can come together. <coughs> and for many app developers and many other partners that we deal with, they'd like to focus on one particular aspect. They want to focus on buses and tubes. They're not going to focus on dial ride They're not going to focus on the river boats and so on. So this is the one place where it all comes together uh, for consumers. We changed, as I said, because we've got this very disparate uh, portfolio of sites and services. We had around 70 websites. Things have begin, begun to look a bit old-fashioned. The old site wasn't great on a mobile, wasn't good on a tablet. So that's what we really had to address. We had to create this really great mobile experience. We had to integrate this information and these tools using that single API, improve the journey planner, and improve our maps. We had five different mapping platforms on the old site. And you'd just be jumping around from one to the other or downloading a PDF. And it wasn't a great experience for customers. And we looked at that and we said, we've really got to do something uh, much better for customers with maps. Um, and that's what we've, we've done and we've delivered. So this is the site. You'll find it at tfl.gov.uk. Um, it's uh, uh, responsive design. So you can see there that it's, it's working on uh, mobile, tablet, and desktop in a single site. Uh, we've pushed the boundaries of that as hard as we can so that you're getting the best possible experience on each of those devices uh, in that single site. So let's just focus uh, for a couple of minutes on maps. So we've got the data, we've got the kind of the approach, but now what about maps? And maps really, from a transport point of view, they're at the core uh, of what customers want to do with us. They want to go from A to B, 
They want to be able to visualize that in a number of ways, a schematic map like Harry Beck's map that we were talking about earlier from the 1930s. Or they want to visualize that on a geo map. And so we need to be able to bring that all together, all that data, all those different data layers, and present them on a map and give customers a really great experience uh, in the process of that. So this is an example of how we've integrated the Google Maps API with our journey planner. The journey planner has about 4 million, users, uh, 4 million customers using it a month. And we can just see here an example of how it's uh, appearing on the desktop. And what we've done is we've, we've integrated the Google Maps right in there at every single step. So you can see wherever you are, whatever your, uh, place you are in your journey planning uh, journey, uh, you've got a, an integrated Google Map there. And then we start overlaying our own assets on top of that map. So we might overlay a cycle hire docking station, we'll overlay a tube station, a bus stop, and you can interact with those objects. So here we can see the walking journey from my office to St. James's Park Station. You can see a couple of cycle hire docking stations, and you can actually see their live status right now, which tells you how full they are of bikes. On the right-hand side here, we can just see uh, the integration with Street View. Obviously, if, you, if you're using the Google Maps API, then you can be using Street View as well. And that's pretty handy. Uh, if it's a place you haven't been to before, then uh, where is the entrance to that tube station? How do I get there? Uh, what about that bus stop? Where exactly is that? Uh, and the Street View enables that to be done really nicely. So some other applications where we've used maps. Uh, we've got a tool called Nearby, uh, which really just drops you on a map. Says, uh, uh, shows you where you are, and then it shows you all the transport assets that are around you. So um, I'm standing at Paddington, actually at this bus stop here, and I can see that there's a cycle hire docking station right by me. It tells me uh, uh, how full that one is. I've got the Paddington station itself. I've got uh, some bus stops um, and different assets, and then I can start interacting with these assets. So clicking on this pin, I can suddenly see when the next bus is arriving, or if I click on the cycle hire docking station, I can suddenly see from that single API, from that single data model, I can suddenly see how many bikes are in there right now, or when the next tube is going, or what the status of the river service is, and it just goes on and on and on. And by creating that really nice data layer, then we can create these really nice maps and do some, some nice interactions on them. This is another example of, of how we've integrated the maps here, and this is the, the bus stops. Obviously, there's a ridiculous number of bus stops in London. We've got like 20,000 bus stops. Uh, so it's a, it's a network that isn't necessarily easily understood unless you can start interacting with it and manipulating it. So what we're doing here is we're enabling people to interact with that in a way that they haven't been able to do before. See all the routes from a particular stop, see where they go, uh, start seeing the live status, uh, the next arrivals of any bus at any stop, uh, integrate that with journey planning, and so on and so on. So that's a little a whistle-stop tour, if you like, um, of what we've been doing. Uh, first few four days, just to give you a flavor, uh, we've had a, a couple of million uh, visitors. I think it's just around about three million now uh, since we launched. You can see the service is beginning to pick up, people be beginning to uh, get used to this and begin to interact with these maps, interact with the journey planning, uh, and do so more on mobile devices. So we're seeing at least half of the traffic now on mobile devices are just beginning to overtake what we're seeing on desktop. Uh, and that was really one of the, the big aims of doing this, to, to see that rise. So hopefully that's, uh, that whistle-stop tour is uh, giving you a bit of a flavor of what we're doing with the site, what we're doing with data, and what we're doing with the Maps API. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs>